going to talk about tonight, the miracle of thought, the miracle of thought. Here we go. Yes, dear ones, Judah here again. So let us tell you a little bit about the differences between you and us. We think thoughts as well, obviously, and in the realms of the fifth dimensional and up through the higher dimensions, all beings, all beings, billions of beings, angelic and interstellar of many myriads of races are all thinking just like you. And for higher dimensional beings, the difference is that we reside in an expanse that is not restricted by time, limitations, by space. And in these, these expansive areas where we are unlimited beings, our thoughts are instantly manifested. We think it, it is. We think it, it is. We think it, it is. Instant manifestations. This is the miracle of thought. Now, here's the scary part. Hold on to your hat. You also have the miracle working power of thought. You think it and it is. You think it and it is. You think it and it is. Now, you live in a, a, a lower density, and so sometimes there is more of a lapse between when you think it and when it manifests. Whereas in our higher realms, we think it and there's instantaneous manifestation. The two are literally simultaneous, the thought and the manifestation. But you also are existing in this paradigm of the miracle of thought. You see, there is no neutral thought. There is no neutral thought. Whatever you think has power. And whatever you think is creating a thing. Your thoughts are constantly creative. They are creative in nature. So what is the big difference then between the miracle of our thought and where we dwell, where we're manifesting continually good things, miraculous things, powerful wisdom and healing and blessing from our realm with our thought? What is the difference between you and ourselves? The difference is that we have a higher mind, a connection to source, and we have uh, what you would call in your realm self-control over our thoughts. We are aware, we are always aware of our thoughts, and we are aware that they are creating. And because we live in a realm of unconditional love, unconditional love and full blessing of wisdom and the source of all knowledge, our thoughts are not inaccurate. We do make mistakes sometimes, we will say, in reading energies and situations, but we are not typically misaligned aligned with lies. We are aligned with truth and love. You see, that is the difference. And so for you, some of you want to have instantaneous, miraculous manifestations of your thoughts and your wishes, but we hate to inform you that that's probably not <laughs> what you really want because until we would say until you have your more self-control and awareness around your thoughts and so there is a grace that comes at times there is a grace from higher dimensional beings to slow down or interrupt your the manifestation of your thoughts and that's not always the case. Sometimes we simply allow you to experience the consequences of your thoughts. 
for really this is the only way that you begin to learn. So we would ask you to be mindful, to think about what you're thinking. And of course, the, 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 the goal, the, the higher goal is to be of no mind and no need to think, just being present and addressing whatever presents itself in the moment with the action of will, without thought. Addressing it with the action of will without thought and being aligned with your higher self and source. And so higher beings, enlightened beings have no need for thought. It's not uh, 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 a needed tool in their tool belt. And these beings prefer not to think about much at all. Now, the mind, of course, can be used as a tool for processing and activation. But we are talking about, well, the mind can be like a a junk drawer in your kitchen. There are so many thoughts in there that the, the drawer becomes stuffed and it's hard to find anything that's worth digging through the drawer for. And the older you get, the more stuff you have stuffed in your mind. And the more difficult it is to make, to retain what is helpful because there's so much in there. And this is why people experience memory loss in aging because they have too many thoughts in stuffed in their mind, like things stuffed in a junk drawer in the kitchen. So to clear out the mind, to be of no mind, to think of nothing at all is where you are headed on your ascension. But we will say it's quite a fruitless practice to try to make yourself stop thinking. It's like trying to make a dog stop chasing its tail. So when you meditate, you can begin to train your mind to relax. So if you can't get the mind to stop thinking, don't bother with that. Instead, try to get the mind, the fearful parts of the mind, to relax. To relax and relinquish attachments. And this is the value of meditation, is that it helps you to release your attachments to your thoughts. You see, thoughts are (laughs) very pompous. Every thought you think thinks that it is very, very, very important and that you should pay attention to it. And so... Thoughts, though, are not. They are just not that important. And thoughts are energetic in nature. They are like little entities, little living beings. They want to be fed. They are like little babies, little children that demand to be fed, to be fed, to be fed, and to be held and be coddled. So they are like living entities. And if you feed a thought, it will most certainly grow. And it will come back hungry for more. So the thought you think wants you to pay attention to it, and then it wants you to feed it so that it can grow. And if you feed it, it will most certainly grow. And before you know it, you have... This entity, thought entity, is much too big and taking up too much space rent-free in your head. So the goal in ascension is, is, is working towards no mind 
no mind. And this is a characteristic of enlightened beings. They don't like to think. They don't want to think. They think as little as possible. They are simply in the moment, engaged with the will, with what is in front of them. They are not thinking about the past or about the future because those things do not exist. There is only the now. But so assuming that we are not there yet, you may start by thinking about your thinking. Since you can't stop the thinking, try thinking about what you're thinking. Hmm, why did I just think that? Be, let it come up in your awareness. You see, this is the problem, is not paying attention to what you're thinking and all this creating and manifesting is happening while you're asleep at the wheel. Think about what you're thinking. Is it true? Are you absolutely certain that it's true? Are you absolutely certain that it's true? If it is true, is it serving you to think about that thought? Is it serving you to give it your attention? Is it serving your higher fifth dimensional self to continue to focus on that thought, to feed it, to grow it, to coddle it, to give in to its demands? If you are taking the course, you know about the sunflower strategy. You just need to turn towards something else. If you keep giving your attention to a thought, it will continue to expand. So if it's not something that you want to manifest, better to stop dead in your tracks. So your thoughts are magical and you are a magician. And all of your thoughts are creative. So if there is something in your life right now that you do not want, this is the hard part, my dears. It is always the hard part for this vessel. Take responsibility. You have created it. Likely, if it's something you really don't want, obviously you didn't intentionally create some difficult, challenging, painful circumstance for yourself. Of course you didn't. But on some unconscious level, some part of you might not even be a part of you from this life. It could be from a past life. But some part of you on a subconscious level is creating everything in your reality. So these things that are appearing that you don't want are appearing for a reason. They are mirrors to show you, mirrors to show you yourself. Now you can cover up the mirror and pretend that you are not as you are. But the mirror in front of you, the situation, the person, the conversation, the things in the culture that you see that you can't stand, that you wish would change or be different, those are mirroring to you some part of yourself. Some part. And this, we know this is a hard lesson to hear. We know it's not fun and uncomfortable. We know it, it feels uh, uh, especially difficult if you have been a real victim. And we know that there are some of you who experience real, true trauma. But you cannot cease to be the victim and rise above the trauma without this understanding. And so we share it because we love you and care about you and want you to overcome. Now we will share with you, this vessel has a child who 
has had many, many difficulties raised by a loved one, an alcoholic loved one, and predisposed to a lot of difficulty as a result. And this child has struggled, struggled with addiction, struggled with poverty mentality, struggled with temper and many other things. And this child has, is now a young, young person, a young adult, and has many, many valid reasons that he could blame the important people in his life. But this will not serve him well. What will serve him well is to now take responsibility for creating the present moment for himself. Being aware of his thoughts and creating something different. Now, on the, the side of of the vessel's part of the relationship with the child. When conflicts and difficulties arise, she has created that for herself. And so she can look at the child as a mirror, as a mirror and say, there I am, there I am, that's me. I'm the black sheep. I'm the black sheep. I'm blowing it. I'm blowing it and blaming others. I'm blowing it and blaming my parents or my upbringing or my situation. I do that. That's me. I do that. I see myself. I see myself in the mirror of my child. And I am thankful that my child is mirroring to me to me, mirroring myself to me. He is another me. He is another me. And I am creating this reality. And so this vessel understands that when she can love herself, when she's blowing it big, love herself when she's, when she's blaming, love herself when she's failing, love herself when she's being addictive or whatever, whatever it is, the mirror her is showing her, the mirror of her child is showing her when she can fully embrace what she sees in the mirror of her child, fully embrace them as parts of her. Yes. Parts of her and forgive and overcome. Then the situation will shift and the child will be a different person. And this will be the result of her creation. We are one. We are one. It is so. It is so. And it is not just the beautiful, loving, high vibe, peaceful, powerful, gentle, one in front of you that is mirroring yourself to you. It is also the most unlovely, the most unworthy, the most struggling, the most, the one that is the most in pain, impoverished and suffering. That one also is you as well. And the master Jesus spoke very plainly about this. He said, you, I'm paraphrasing here. You think that you're loving a hogwash. Anybody can love someone who loves him. To love the one that is your enemy, that is to love. So love your enemies. Do good to those who persecute you and say all manner of evil against you. Love that one. You see, and this command of Christ was born out of this understanding that we are all one. We are all the Christ. We are all one, all the Christ. 
And that doesn't mean just the ones that are supposedly, quote, getting it right or being spiritual or have their shit together. It is for the ones that are in pain, for the ones that hurt, for the ones who are asleep and unaware and unawakened. And so when someone in front of us is presenting us with a mirror and they are spiritually sleeping, they don't get it. We must look at ourselves and say, oh, that is a mirror for me. There are places where I'm asleep, places where I don't get it. If they're lying to us, we ask ourselves, where am, how am I? a liar. How am I being dishonest? You see. And so we cannot grow spiritually if we are rejecting our mirrors. And this is why the issue of boundaries and the psychological talk around boundaries can be very damaging for spiritual growth. Because boundaries, the setting of boundaries can be an excuse to separate yourself from someone that you don't like their behavior. Now, we're not asking you to allow someone to physically, sexually, or psychically abuse you, okay? But understand that. Otherwise, we can use situations as an excuse to withdraw from our mirrors because we don't like what we're seeing in the mirror. We don't like what that person is showing us about ourselves. Okay, tough stuff tonight. We know, we know, but we understand that the ones of you who are here are serious about growing. You're serious about getting rid of your ego. Perhaps you're feeling like this vessel. This vessel is just downright sick of her ego. She does not want to have it around anymore. It's outlived its usefulness to her. She has no use for it. She wants to put it out in the trash. And so we appreciate and we applaud your willingness to sometimes hear the tough things. We know that it's because you're serious about growing. Not too serious, but serious about growing. And yes, have a laugh at yourself when you blow it big. Have a laugh. It's okay. It's okay. The atmosphere always with Judah for you is this unconditional love and acceptance at all times, all times, unconditional love and acceptance. And that is why we will speak the truth to you and not mince words. It is from love. And the master Jesus also said, this is how you know you are true son or daughter of God, that you are not spared discipline. What would you think of a parent or parents who allowed their children to do anything that pleased them and never, never gave them guidance or correction or discipline of any sort? Well, that wouldn't be a really good way to grow up. And so if you invite us into your life, and we believe that you have because you are here, know that we will discipline you as we discipline this vessel quite regularly as needed. And we do it out of love, out of love, as a loving parent would discipline a child. And this is an honor because it means you are a true son, a true daughter of God a true heir. For what king or what queen would leave their inheritance to a child who refused to be disciplined in any way? Of course they would not. They would not squander their life's work and the authority of overseeing the kingdom to a child who had no self-control and no willingness to be disciplined in any good way. 
And so for those of you on a fast track to, to, to being the heirs, the kings, queens, the princes and princesses of this earth, then we give you thanks for receiving this message. And as always, take what you like and leave the rest. Thank you.